Well, thank you for staying tuned. It's still Monday edition of Your Business Nigeria. The fundamental roles of fiscal policy, monetary policy, and trade policy cannot be overemphasized in any economy, especially in terms of economic management. Now, these economic policies are mostly used to stabilize and sustain economic projection. Uh, progression and especially during the period of economic crisis. It's the duty of any government to improve the living conditions of its populace through major economic policies, either through fiscal, monetary and trade policy. Well, the Chief Investment Officer with Afri Invest West Africa, Mr. Robert Omotunde, is live in the studio for us to get down and understand more of this. Good day. It's good to have you in the studio. Thank you very much. For yeah, yes, I think I'm going to start with the inflation figures we had late last week, 26.72%. It seems like it continues to climb higher despite all efforts by the MPC to use a rate increase to address this. How does this come to you? What is the course and what are the possible short, medium and long-term solutions? Well, I think that um, inflation is not going to go away anytime soon mm. in terms of high It's come to stay. Yeah, it's come to stay. <laughs> in fact, uh, we have done some scenario analysis that are a bit quite scary. So um, what I would say now is that Nigerians should get used to inflation at above 20% levels. Because if you look at the current level of inflation, I think the September number Inflation was up by, I think, about 2.1% month on month, you know. And if you look at the highest level of month on month increase we've seen this year, um, it's just about 3%, which we recorded in February. Now, the lowest we have seen is 1.71%. If inflation should rise by 1.71% month on month in the month of October, in fact, inflation will still hit, uh, we, we print closer to, uh, 27 percent mm. you know that is if we should maintain the minimum level of month-on-month -month increase now we've even done some other scenario analysis to suggest that if you get as low as one percent and you know month-on-month uh, -month increases continue at that pace at what level are you able to get out of the current high level of inflation and what we saw like I said is quite scary you know up until the whole of next year you still be printing at nothing less than 17, 18% as far as inflation is concerned. You know, even when the base effect eventually kicks in, you know, base effect is expected to kick in, let's say from January of 2025. At that point in time, that's when you begin to see maybe inflation at 15, 16. 14% levels. So we are not going to get out of this current level of inflation anytime soon. And the indices are quite clear. You know, uh, you talked about causes. Food inflation is a major yeah. contributor yeah, to that um, inflation level. Right now, we are talking about food inflation at 30%. You know, and you know, it's not far-fetched from all of the crises we are facing within the economy, insecurity, uh, the fact that you're seeing even imported inflation contributing a whole lot. Now, there is a, there is a, there is a concept to, to look at when, when we talk about inflation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you see high level of inflationary pressure in the system, after a while, irrespective of the causes of that inflation, mm -hmm. the expectation of higher level of price levels will then begin to be a factor, a contributing factor to inflation level. And that's what we are seeing right now. The fact that inflation is rising, you know, the causes are there, the, the factors are, are unabated, they are still there. Now, you are now seeing expectation of, you know, consumers that inflation will get worse. And all of your activities is geared towards protecting themselves against, you know, worsening levels of inflation. That in itself becomes a factor that if you have to run the regression model for um, inflation forecasts, then you then have to put expectation as part of the variables that you are looking at. So that is also a factor in the inflation levels that we are seeing now. This is October, November is coming, December, the festive periods are also far approaching. When this comes, it's going to put further pressure on inflation. Exchange rate crisis that we are currently facing, mm -hmm. it's a major determinant of what inflation is printing today. Like I said, it's going to get worse. 1,190 yeah. as I like, last checked before I came on air. Absolutely. So, no, so we're, even, we're, we're even selling at 1,200. So selling? Dollar. Yes, if you're, if you're buying. What I mean is, if you check the you know two-way codes, yes, you have the bid, you have the offer. Yeah, those who are selling are selling at one thousand, 
Sorry, those who are buying are buying at one thousand two hundred. Those who are selling are the ones probably selling yeah, at one thousand one ninety. So, this is worrisome. so, so it's it's worrisome, and we, I mean we could get to the foreign exchange part in a bit. Yes, yes, we'll you know, get. but but I mean just looking at inflation, that element alone, and just think about it. What is not tied to the foreign exchange? Almost element? everything. Yes, pump price. You know, even though right now, it's a bit disappointing that you know, <laughs> you know when I speak, I, I speak as a patriotic Nigerian. Right, uh, it's disappointing that you've not seen reflection in the pump price of petrol. In some places, you about know. 600 at the moment. Well, but even that is it reflective of where it should be, given where the exchange rate is priced? I don't think so. Do you know? We are we are not sure. So, so again, we if we uh, say we are not paying subsidy, subsidies, let's stop it. Differentials. You know, so the differential should never come into place because non-payment of subsidy means that you are allowing consumers to pay for whatever price it is. Yes. That is when rational behaviors will begin to come into place. Because, again, yes, you've seen, you know, a lot of change in attitude in terms of how we use uh, fuel. Again, because we have seen that, you know, with the same level of income that you earn, you can't continue to fund, uh, I mean, pay for, for fuel at the level that we are, we are paying. Sure. So people are adjusting their lifestyle. And that's the typical nature of humans. We are very rational beings. You know, but the moment we are, we are reneging, you know, we have said, okay, we are no longer paying subsidy, but we are still paying some sort of differential. It will still lead to some other leakages, you know. And it will not give... You see, let me tell you the truth. If we have a situation where... The, the whole economy is reflective of exactly what it is. What it means is that citizens will make leaders to account more. You understand? What I mean by that is that if your level of income has not increased, as you are advocating that your salary should be increased, you know, for as long as the citizens will not take to lawlessness, they begin to ask their leaders to account to, for how they are spending their money. Because at that point in time, you know, they are feeling the pain. They are feeling the pain of, you know, the hardship in the economy. You know, it's not in the interest of anybody for citizens to go through pains. But Nigeria is at a phase where we do not have the much of funding we parade ourselves to have. You Even know, our reserves are the last like, check. We behave like big brother, but the truth is there is nothing. There is nothing to show for it in the real sense of it. So that is why reasoning has to prevail. The unfortunate thing is what is happening at the foreign exchange market, which is a different kettle of fish uh, in itself. But at the know. time, sorry to interject, yes. at the time there was that agreement or discussion, mm -hmm. suggestions that um, demand and supply would make us uh, get the real pricing or the right pricing for the Naira. Yes. That was what many economists were so, saying. So, and that is still the point. And I stand by it, for example, because what is going on now, we remove 43 items from accessing foreign exchange. Yes. We allowed them to say, okay, now you can participate. But what is happening at that phase? I think it's better to look at the data so that we can be, we can be sure where the problem is. Because it's a, it's a very sad time to be a Nigerian, I must be honest with you. Because I believe that we, we have no business with this current, the current level of exchange rate is, is not sustainable. We can continue at this pace. The whole thing will come crumbling. And we don't want to get to that phase. What is the way out? When you look at the data, okay, importation of items in 2022 is estimated to about 50, 50 billion, you know, dollars for the whole year. An average of about 4.2 billion uh, uh, dollars to fund importation on a monthly basis. Now, when you look at the sources of FX, where we are getting crude oil uh, or proceeds from oil at about 34 billion dollars. You know, uh, foreign, uh, capital importation was about $4.2 billion. We had uh, remittances as well, as high as about $18 billion, but that did not benefit the, the government. It did not benefit the central bank. The reason was because, you know, at a point we were doing five for five. You know, you saw exchange rates at, uh, at, at 400 and, four, four, 401 uh, uh, naira to the dollar. Meanwhile, you are exchanging at the parallel market as high as 750, 800, 850 in some instances. So people will bring funds through the you know, official window and the central bank will capture it as remittance. But they're actually getting those funds out in USD, such that as the inflow is coming in, it's also going out. So it's not benefiting the government in funding, you know, either accruing the reserve or even funding importation or what have you. So the consequence of that is that you then have a deficit where you have a 50 billion 
you know, uh, in terms of importation. Mm. And then you are seeing um, your proceeds from oil as well as from capital importation at around uh, maybe $37 billion. So there's still a shortfall of about $10 billion in 2022. Mm. In 2023, at the run rate we are, we are moving, there's about $20 billion, do you understand, that, you know, is going to be like a shortfall in terms of what the aggregate importation will be and what we could get from oil based on the current run rates. The point now is that even in terms of supplying the market, and you know, we try to look at the data, looking at the central bank's you know, intervention, as well as the intervention of the, uh, I mean, as well as what goes on in the parallel market. From mm -hmm. those shortfall that I saw in 2022, for example, there is, a, there is a volume of close to about 30 to $34 billion that was supplied by the parallel market in 2022 based on the available data you know we have aggregate imported items into the country in dollar terms we also have what the central bank was able to sell at its official window the differential represented what was funded with the alternative market which is the parallel market and that's about 34 billion dollars that is the benefit we are supposed to be getting with the removal of um the 43 i mean with the addition the inclusion of 43 items but what are we saying in today's market, as we speak, the R&E effects window is still, is still trading at 801 naira to the dollar. Meanwhile, we are talking about the parallel market at 1,200. So we begin to see a situation where inflow will come in through remittances. And looking at all our problems right now, oil, uh, improving oil production is not easy to come by, given you know, the challenges the government is facing with crude oil theft and the likes. If we put that by the side, the other element the government can focus on is remittances. Yeah. Capital importation is also not, it's not, it's not easy to get. Because at, at, at the place where we are now, your interest rate environment will have to be about 30% for you to be able to attract foreign portfolio investment. But they won't even come at that level. You know? And if you go to that level, by that time, the whole economy will come crumbling because the financial system cannot absorb that shock. A lot of the banks have purchased assets at 14 15% levels. You take interest rate to 30%. You are dealing with another banking crisis in your, in your hands. So interest rate element is not even the way to go. The only way we, we can go now is to get this foreign exchange pricing right. And I'm glad that when the central bank issued that circular, including the 43 item, they mentioned the fact that they were trying to align the exchange rate. We are not aligned today. The question you should ask is, who are those selling FX at 801 naira to the dollar in the, in the now the Nigerian Autonomous Foreign Exchange Market, NAFEM? Who are those selling at that rate? And who are those buying at that? I dare say that we are just deceiving ourselves. Nobody sells at that rate. Nobody buys at that rate. Right. So why are we quoting that rate? And then it begins to send a wrong signal to the market that the foreign exchange is still manipulating, is still being manipulated at the official window. So the truth is that if we get to that point of alignment and the central bank becomes steady, is gradually supplying the market, and we have done the numbers, even at the level of 1.2 million barrels of oil yeah. that we are producing today, at the minimum, you see, the central bank has the capacity to support the currency market by nothing less than $1.4 billion on a monthly basis. If a $1.4 billion is being pumped into this market on a monthly basis, at the level of our oil production, if there are no other things that meets the high that the market is not aware of, then we will not be talking about 1200 Naira to the dollar, mm -hmm. you know, because by then we will have a line exchange rate. There is no arbitrage in buying at the parallel market or buying at the official window because all the 43 items have been merged together. So we shouldn't be having this discrepancy that we are having right now. And it's contrived because don't forget, these 43 items were playing in the official window. I mean, in the parallel market window yeah. before this inclusion. Now, the market has been included, but the central bank is not supplying anybody. That is it. So if you don't supply, how do you ensure? The queues will get longer. Absolutely. And that is what That's is what it on. means. And then why are we still having rates at 800 naira to the dollar if indeed the NAFEM is a market-determined exchange rate? And that brings us back to the point that we have been mentioning, that why do we keep fighting the market in the bid to, you know, I don't know what objective we are trying to achieve. But it's hurting us. It's hurting the economy badly. It's hurting the citizens so badly. And it's so painful because these decisions that we are taking at this point, if care is not taken, if care is not taken, in fact, you know, it's not a good time to be a Nigerian, I must be honest. Because when you look at, even as an economist, when you look at all these situations, and you try to look at the, look at the inflation number we're just yes. talking about, that 
the way out to even get out. In fact, we model a scenario that even if you're growing, if your month-on-month -month inflation is, is only at 1% 1, 1 on a month-on-month -month basis, you can't get out of the double-digit territory, not in the next two years. That is how serious the situation we have found our, ourselves is. But mm -hmm. the, these things have a solution, right? If we say this is the policy we want to adopt, can we stick to it? Removal of subsidy, why are we still paying differential today if there is anything like that? But when I see the prices, it tells me that we are still paying differentials, you know? And we are importing foreign exchange into the country, you know, by way of export. But what then happens is that we are also paying because our import bill is about $50 billion annually, $50 billion. And the, the totality of the potential of, this, of the central bank by way of oil proceeds and by way of capital importation, which is drying up, is only about you know, 34 to $37 billion on an annual basis. So that short for where is it going to come from? Then you now compound that problem with the fact that central bank is now not supplying the market as much. So if the central bank does not supply the market as much, you have worsened the situation. That is what is going on. Now, at the run rate we are running in 2023, we have found the gap. Where, whereas you had a gap of about $13 billion or, or so in 2022. At the run rate of 2023, the gap is as high as $30 billion. And what has the central bank uh, you know, supplied? Anyways, at about $18.2 .18 billion that they supplied in 2022, the shortfall, about $30 billion, was supplied by the market. In fact, as a matter of fact, it's about $32 billion that was supplied by the parallel market. So that is how deep that parallel market is as we speak today. And at the run rate we are moving in 2023, you know, given what the central bank is able to supply, because the supply has been very scarce, you know, I dare say that the parallel market is now striving to supply as much as 35 to $40 billion. And that is why you are seeing the current crisis that we're seeing right now. If we sell oil and we get proceeds, and from our own estimation, these proceeds can be as high as $20 billion after paying your, your cost of production, and you know, you model your 80% petroleum profit tax. You know, so where is that $20 billion going into? The minimum we can do at the level of reserve we have now, if we keep our reserve at the current $32, $33 billion that it is, and we use the entirety of our proceeds to supply the market, mm. we will be better for it. And the fact that you have taken out all, you have now added those 43 items, mm -hmm. the benefit will be enormous. Yes. Because at that point, central bank can buy and sell from the same window. What is causing the current spike is completely, is completely, <laughs> is completely alien to anybody that is looking at the market, you know, at the level that we are moving. And something has to be done urgently. Because, I mean, what you are now saying is, yeah. market is now speculating that we could get to 1,500 naira to the dollar. Come on. You know, for an economy is, of this, is, <laughs> I mean, and if you look at the fundamentals of, of the economy, that is completely mispriced. Mm. You know, only because we are not doing what is right, mm. we are we are manipulating one segment of the market mm. at the expense of the other, the, mm. the detriment to the detriment of the economy, because that is what is responsible for the price levels that we are seeing right now. And something needs to be urgently done. I, I wanted us to touch on the issue of diversification, which we've happed on for some time. And this time around, solid minerals seems like the way to go and other. Uh, so what do you think, agricultural, how can all of this help us bridge some of this gap? Those are long-term efforts, mm. you know, because they are not going to yield True. immediate benefit that we get mm. our exchange rate from 1,200 to 700, Down to 700 now, now. which is the target of government, mm. you know. So, but it's good. It's good that the economy is diversified. You know, but diversification, again, when we focus on agriculture, agriculture at the primary stage is, is just like a waste of time, you know, because the value you get mm. when you just extract those products from the market and you sell them in the export market is not as much as when there is value addition. And how do you add value in a country where the infrastructure decay is massive? Where are the rules to move those goods from one point to the other? You know, where, where is the power? You know, well, to some extent, power is a bit, you know, better now. It you is. Know, to, a, to a very large extent, I must say. Yes. You know, but where are the roads? Where are the, what is the ease of doing business? You know, where, is all the econo where are all the economic indices that you will look at that will support anybody trying to do business in Nigeria? I mean, so for me, any, any effort at diversification, you know, investing in the solid mineral sector, of the economy, which is still primary, if you, if you think about it. You extract those resources and then you send them out of the country. We don't get much, you know. <laughs> I mean, and then they get um, shadowed by, you know, some of the other issues we face with theft, 
you know, people, you know, stealing some of these resources and using, the, using them for their personal gain. So, but let's focus on the immediate. You know, if we just stop doing stupid things, the economy will begin to work well. Mm. You know, just let's focus. You know, somebody was saying that, you know, the problem with African countries most of the time is that we major or minor. And we minor or major, if there is any word like that. So that is, we leave the most critical things undone. And then we'll be chasing shadows. And at the end of the day, the result is the kind of economy that we have today. It's, it's shameful mm. for every Nigerian to see our to exchange done. rate at 1,200 naira. We don't have any business. Going there. We'll keep a tab on this and we'll keep talking about this because a lot needs to be done with regards to this. I, I must thank you, Mr. Robert Omotunde, giving us uh, your in-depth analysis into this very uh, important topic of discourse. He is the Chief Investment Officer with Afri Invest West Africa. Thank you so much. Have a productive week. Thank you for having me.